Let's go um, elsewhere in college football, and let's talk a little bit about this line. I've referred to it a lot this year. Who's above the line? Who's below the line? And guess what? On Saturday, I felt like we got a little bit of separation at the top. There were two teams that looked awfully good, and one of them impressed a certain coach that, as we know, I think listens to the show. First and foremost, congratulations to Michigan. <laughs> they're as good as advertised. That's that's. I said this uh, on the radio a second ago. I think they're the best football team I've seen in 11 years of being a head coach. I've never seen a football team like that, that deep. I'm not sure if this is true, but I was told this walking off the field. I think they traveled 75 people and maybe played like 74 of them. I don't know. I mean, they've got, they're one of the deepest teams, one of the best teams, one of the biggest teams, fastest teams, strongest teams, and they do not make mistakes. They, they, are, they are truly like a boa constrictor, and they, they do not beat themselves. PJ, welcome to the show. I, I love it. I love that you listen to the show. I know you didn't just pull boa constrictor, you know, just like you just didn't like just all of a sudden you listen. I, so, you know what? Welcome. Um, I appreciate that you listen. Um I also, like, I agree with almost everything that you said, but before I get into that, I, it just got me wondering, and I guess now all of us can wonder, like, who are the other coaches that are listening um, or watching? So I thought, like, wouldn't it be fun for all of us if we just give a, just a touch of a roll call? You know, just a quick shout out to all the guys listening, I can just assume. So, you know, uh, Coach Kelly, Chip, Appreciate you listening. Um, thanks for doing so. I'm sure you're, you're subscribed and, and ready to go. Lincoln, you know, both of the, the hometown guys here in Southern California. So, Lincoln, thanks for, for watching. Um, Jim, I know your wife's got you on the YouTube now and, and YouTube TV, which is what you talked about earlier, and now probably on the YouTube. So, Jim, thank you for, for watching. We'll see you this week when we come up to Ann Arbor for Indiana. Um, you know, I'm, and I'm certainly, you know, Coach Day, uh, Ryan, thanks for watching. Um, Coach Franklin, James, enjoy our meetings all the time. And then the last one, and and I'm sure that I'm sure he carves out time for this. So, Coach Saban, I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching, my friend. Uh, PJ, going with the boa constrictor reference there, which I really love. So, Michigan and Georgia, which I'll talk about in, in this segment right here, separate themselves a little bit this last Saturday. Now, I know there, there were some top 10 teams that did not play, and so we didn't, you know, have a chance to see Penn State. We didn't have a chance to see Washington or Oregon. But when you look at my top 10, how I ranked them, you know, Georgia went back up to number one, and Michigan didn't fall, but, like, settled in at number two. And, and to me, there began to be a little separation for the first time this year. I've been very adamant that we have 9, 10, 11 teams in this, in this season that I feel like are national championship contenders. Now, that will dwindle as we get results. So this is not going to be the case for the entirety of the season. However, we did get a little bit of separation this week. I think we would all be blind if we didn't see that and let's start with Michigan let's start with PJ Fleck and what he said so he faces this Michigan team and and this Michigan team is exactly how he described them they are incredibly deep they know exactly what they're doing and how they're very talented and at this point in time albeit against a schedule that hasn't been fantastic no other team has been as complete or as dominant as Michigan this year, full stop. And, and that's what PJ was talking about. The analogy of a boa constrictor is absolutely true. And the way that I have said it this year on this program, as you've heard, is that there is an inevitability to their win, and they know it and you know it. It's like being trapped with no weapon whatsoever in a small room with a hungry boa constrictor. It's going to end poorly for you. There's nothing you can do about it. You, it's going to suffocate you at some point. And that's what Michigan does. They will suffocate you at some point. Here's the, the, the best way I have to describe it is that this is, is as deep a team as there is in the country. I believe they probably have between 12 to 15, maybe more 
guys that will be drafted next spring. So they've got NFL depth on their roster currently. They're veteran, they're strong, and they have a unique, firm grasp of exactly how they win and why. And that's a dangerous thing. That's a really dangerous thing because they don't make mistakes. They are one of the least penalized teams in the country. In fact, I was watching the game Saturday night, and I believe Todd Blackledge said, and, and Noah Eagle, who were calling the game for NBC, they, I believe they said that Michigan had one penalty in the game. Maybe there was a second one, but it was like a kickoff out of bounds. But it was, it was their only one penalty in the last two games. Like, they don't beat themselves. They don't give you an inch. And... And that's a scary proposition for anybody, even really good teams. Um, they complement each other so well. Again, this whole thing about like a firm grasp of, of how they win and why, th they know what they're trying to do philosophically everywhere on the field, whether it's the special teams, the defense, or the offense. They know why they're playing a certain way. And, and players that know the why are dangerous players. You see, I've always said this. In high school, any coach can teach you what to do. And the really good ones will teach you how to do it, you know, the tech technique. But then the great coaches usually are at the next level and they'll teach you why you're doing it. And when you learn the why, it's a powerful thing, really in all of life, in all walks of life, but, but in particular in football. Again, anybody can know what to do. Few know how to do it and even fewer know why. This whole team knows exactly why they're doing things and how to do it. And that's a dangerous thing. They have faced... Well, no, on, on offense, they have the second fewest number of drives per game in the country. That applies also to their defense. Do you know why they're so unique? Their quarterback seems to care this much, flashing a big zero, zero cares, zero cares about his stats. You see, if they had a guy that went there and wanted more NIL dollars, wanted to throw for, you know, lead the country in passing, wanted to throw 40 touchdown passes, it wouldn't work because a player like that would be too selfish for Michigan. J.J. McCarthy, in a lot of ways, is the perfect guy, not just player, but guy for Michigan because he doesn't care if he throws it 18, 19, 20 times because he knows that's why they win. Face the fewest second or second fewest drives per game in all of college football. They've they have mastered what they do. Here's my only question with Michigan. I've only got one. What happens when they get taken out of that blueprint for whatever reason? Whether it's a couple of fluky turnovers, whether you know a, a special teams touch, something happens like what happened against TCU. Let's face it in the in the semifinal. What happens when they get taken outside of their blueprint? I guess we don't really know. That's my only question with them. Defense had two pick sixes. They allowed 169 total yards against Minnesota, and they've got the number one scoring defense in the country, giving up just over six and a half points per game. Good luck with Michigan. My gosh, I keep saying that, but it's true. 